Once again, it's time. It's time for the feedback loop. Chris Courtney here, New Pragmatic. It's a uh, beautiful Tuesday here. My goodness. And uh, I'm super excited to get started. We've got Rebecca in here. Chelsea's back as well. Um, Chelsea's working through the updated um, the updated design ethics exercise. Uh, for those of you that were in the program pr uh, previously, this was, this was uh, where we were looking at Columbia Sportswear and how they went through and kind of vandalized Wikipedia. We updated this recently to add um, Grubhub into the crosshairs because, you know, th there's ethical issues that they, they just kind of rotate, you know. And I felt like um, felt like we kind of beat the horse on Columbia. So we're taking a look at Grubhub and um, what, full story, backstory here. Grubhub... Um, uh, was caught um, basically uh, last year in a little scan, a bit of a scandal. Um, Grubhub makes their money by charging um, up to 30% every time somebody orders via their app instead of, uh, or via them instead of the, the restaurant um, that you're ordering from. Uh, so um, if you order from, directly from the res restaurant, Grubhub gets like 15%. If you order directly from Grubhub, they get like 30% because they're generating the sale. So they, um, so they created a series of websites for like all these brands. They, they bought like thousands of, of URLs that looked a lot like the URL of the brand that you were looking for. And then they put up a website there and basically they were, if you were going in Google f looking for your mom and pop restaurant, um, that search result would, would likely steer you to Grubhub's website rather than the actual website. And of course that meant Grubhub made more money. Um, this is like really terrible, especially now. Like now in this environment where everybody everything's going delivery and people make virtually no money off of delivery via Grubhub. Grubhub's great, but because of the terms of service, if you're having to pay them 30% when you otherwise would pay them 15%, having them create a shady knockoff of your website, it, it just it, it smacks of like bad business ethics. So um, Grubhub was doing that. And, and the, the ethical challenge there is, okay, so you're a designer that's building these sites for Grubhub. How could we do this better? Um, so Chelsea was was chiming in here, and um, I've I've got her her response here, and she, you know, she's making some very logical uh, suggestions here. One, offer a better product, um, in, in, improve the app, um, improve um, improve the app, make it better than make it better than the the restaurant's website, um, and. In many ways, I think that's what they were doing. I think they were actually making a better website. Um, and I think, you know, when you look at it and you think to yourself, okay, so so we've got a better website than our restaurant. And because of because of that, we're going to we're going to make more money for us than the restaurant. The, the worry here is that I run the I run the golden goose into the ground like the, the, the restaurant lays the egg okay but if I go to the if I get, go to the goose too often the goose dies so how do I help the goose thrive and keep in mind pricing structure stays the same all right um, I, I get my 30% if they order for me they get their 15%. Um, the other one was changing the pricing model. Instead of having the vari varying charges that depend on where the customers order their food, Grubhub could make it a flat rate in the con in the contract for restaurants. And I think that's that's like a very logical thing. Unfortunately, that's not something that I think we're going to have a lot of control over as designers coming in. Um, you know, there's going to be this. There's going to be this push from sales 
that oh, we can't just make it a flat rate. Although, there's got to be another way here because what we want is we want more volume. We want more volume of sales. We don't want fewer sales where we're just getting more money. We want, we want to raise the volume. Um, and then the third option here is cover more territory and expand business. So, you know, we're going to deliver groceries. We're going to uh, deliver prescriptions, these things. Um, the trouble there, like liquor stores and whatnot, the trouble there is like, honestly, you could get away with that with a brand like Seamless uh, because Seamless is just like, it could be anything. With Grubhub, it's kind of locked into food. And that's a blessing and a curse. Like, there's just so, some brands that you can't go do other things with. Um, you know, um, and Grubhub's one of them. So, the good news here, Chelsea, is that you've got options. You've offered up options. Um, I really think that option one is in line with what Grubhub would tell these restaurants. Hey, I made a better product than you piss off. That's that's like what they would say. Um, and that's not exactly, you know, what, what I want to do. What I want to do is I want to make the restaurant a better product. Um, and the, the concept here I want you to think about and there's a mo there's a model for this, and and unfortunately this company is under extreme duress right now. Airbnb, um, for all their for all the problems that you've heard with Airbnb, they were doing something uh, a few years back that was pretty dead smart. In that, they wanted you as a host to make as much money as possible. So they basically sent stylists to the homes of super hosts, okay? And a super host could have like, is this somebody who has a high volume of, of um, occupancy, renters, wh whatever the term is for Airbnb. Um, and they would come in and glamour shot your house to make it look more appealing and better photography on the Airbnb site of your location meant more people were likely to say, you know what, I'm gonna stay there instead of at the, the nearby hotel. And they did this very strategically. They, they, they said, okay, well, I, I want these super hosts, these people who have like five-star ratings and they've, uh, they sell a thousand nights. Well, why can't they sell 2,000 nights? They make money, I make money, okay? So what I'd like to see, and I'm gonna, ch I'm gonna push back here a little bit. What I'd like to see is how, how can we make the restaurant stronger? What can we do to make the restaurant stronger that would also make us more money? Think about that angle for a second because I think I think when we begin to see ourselves as empowering of a client, that instead of competing with the client, that puts us in a slightly different plane. And I think that's where the, the strength is, but, but how could we do it is the question. How could we make our clients make more money? And then by virtue of them making more money, us make more money. See, this isn't there isn't a, this isn't a zero sum game where you either I make more money than you or you make more money than me. If they make more money, I make more money. So how can I help them make more money? Because if the golden goose is making more money, the golden goose lives, right? So that's something I, you know, I want to challenge. I'm going to leave some notes here, and I want to challenge you to think about the golden goose and how how do we nurture that restaurant? Okay. Now there's a lot of different ways you can do that, but 
there are resources being applied against the restaurant. And I'm wondering, what can we do to, instead of being against our client, work with them? And the Airbnb model, something that comes immediate, immediately to mind. All right. So with that, uh, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen because we've got Rebecca over here. I realize that that was monologuing, but there's not a lot to see when it's text. And, and, Ch- and you know, in full disclosure, Chelsea just submitted that. And by the way, great job, Chelsea. I love seeing love seeing the, the, the cadence here of submissions is great. Uh, Chelsea's just getting started. So... Um, if you can be any, if you can, if you can model your behavior after Rebecca, who is here every day, you're gonna make a lot of progress. All right, um, Rebecca, let's see here. Where did you go? You went right here. Okay. All right. So you've got, you've got a couple things: branding and then sell wise. So on the branding question, uh, you've got. Uh, online. Okay, so so you're trying to do inches in Figma. Okay, gotcha. All right, so let's do this, and I'm gonna. Oh, I can't copy that. Um, 8.75 by 2.25. Let's come over to Figma, wherever my Figma is. Oh, by the way, working with color in Figma is going to release later today. I've just got to lay the I got to lay the underlying uh, little ambient audio in that, and we'll have it. All right, so let's do the following. I have I'm just going to draw a frame. Okay, so here's the frame, and actually I want to draw my frame so I can still see the options here. We have paper over here, but obviously that is all in pixels, right? That's the problem. Um, there are plugins for this though. Let's come down here to Easy Units and Easy Units. Um, so, so select no object select select objects to convert to a different unit. So let's grab this frame, and this frame says I'm this many by this many pixels. If I go to inches, and I said um, you had sorry I have to come back to 8.75 so 8.75 and then um, then the width is 2.25 2.25 and there you go Um, so I, I don't necessarily know if that's doing what we want it to do. Will, will it only do... Sorry. This is my first time working with easy units. I went and investigated this a little bit when I saw your question. 8.75. What happens when I just type in 8? There's eight, eight point five. Eh, I don't like that. So let's go take a look at this over in Plugin Land. Um, Community plugins measure. Um, ratio size or easy units. Ooh, tiny factories. They updated this 43 minutes ago. Um, inches. Okay, easy unit. Um, easy units appears to be the only one. Um... I am curious about this because I can't 
I can't tell for certain. Let's see what, what happened. Let's go to this little site here. Let's see if we, uh, is it like, is it like a paid upgrade to be able to do extra space? I don't know. Um, Yeah, that's that's really interesting. I I'm not completely certain. It seem it seems like it does not take um, pixels, which really sucks. Um, now there's there's some some hacky ways I can work around that. Um, so for instance, if I said, okay, well this is one. All right. So one. And one. I know that that's. I know that that's a one inch square. Um, and if I change this to nine, I know that I need to. I need to pull back. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, it's just. It doesn't appear to do doesn't appear to do fra uh, fractions um, in that although what I do know is that if I really wanted to get hacky with it I could just say okay well you know what I'm just gonna do this little hacky thing and this is like total hacky but but it you know if I know that this is an inch Sorry. Then I know that that is a quarter inch. And if you need 8.75, I'm just gonna grab one of these bad boys and then I will, um, so that's 8.75 right there. Hey, hey. So now that, now I know that's 8.75, that's a hack. Um, and the other way was two point. Oh, say, hey, that's me. Um, although this is two point two five. Okay, so I'll go back down here to easy units. I will. I'm, I am gonna like submit a question though because I'm I'm not sure inches. Um, oh, Christ! Does that every time? So let's say, oh, sorry, let's say nine and then two. Okay, so there's nine and two. We know this, this really needs to be 8.75. So here is 8.75 and it needs to be deeper by a quarter inch. This is a quarter inch. So we'll grow our frame a long ways. Oh, look at that. Isn't that fun? Look at that. Okay, so what it would appear is that it can measure in inches, which it just did, but it can't create, I mean, it can measure in 0.75, but it can't create. I've got to think that that's a bug. I've got to think that it's, that, that 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 they intend for this to be to be measuring like this. I'm gonna send them a I'm gonna send them a question mark. Um, but that but that does in fact get us to the size that I was wanting to get to because now we have the 8.75 by the 2.1 2.25, which is in fact what you were going for here. But it, it's frustrating because like the other one is just so much crazier than that. 7.3125 1.1825 now based on what i'm seeing this should do it but it's not doing it right now but that's the only way that i know that's the only only thing that i have in my in my toolbox right now for doing it so that one's that one's called um easy units and we need 
we need this to be a bit better and if you change this to pixels it's just going to blow that up so don't do that um anyway so we'll leave i'm going to leave that there easy unit so and I, and i have it on my list to send them a note and ask them about properly like can we properly measure this stuff um so cell wise uh helping you oh yeah 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 so help me learn how to impl how to implement css grid only for cell wise and care point case studies um oh and then you have a question about the figma background about the background color um let's take a look at that real quick and then we'll get into the css Yeah, I hate it when I have to like, oh, it's it's almost there. Tool that updated 41 minutes ago, but it's not there yet. Um, also, I've got a call with Figma tomorrow. Very excited about that. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna ask them some questions. Uh, maybe I'll ask them about, hey, can we measure print inches? Because I have some people that want to use this for print. Although there's another problem there, and it's that you can't export CMYK, uh, which is needed for print. So if you do this work in Figma, you then need to carry it into like Photoshop and then convert it to CMYK so that it prints with uh, cyan, magenta, yellow, black instead of red, green, blue, because RGB is, is not, uh, a printer has um, cyan, magenta, yellow, and, and the fourth color is black. RGB is, you know, you, you know this because you've been in the, the physical product world, but I'm saying it for the benefit of everybody. Um, related to this, you know, I, I think it's fine, and, and we can see this in action in your CSS. Um, I think it's I think it's fine. Um, you know, it's a button. I, um, it's a button, it's gradient, it's got movement to it. It, it, it doesn't, um, it doesn't disturb me, I guess. I, I, I guess what I'm saying is I, I am very, if it, it fits in with the, re like if this went, if this became, for instance, and I'm just going to add a layer here, um, this became that's weird um oh well i gotta add it to the fill this became white or if it became you know orange i think that'd be very weird because it, it wouldn't fit with the rest of your site so the you know the rest of your site is like this with the gradient buttons that's fine that's fine as long as it's consistent with the rest of your site that's fine if it wasn't then we'd have an issue Okay, but we don't. We don't have an issue. Consistency is what matters. So I would, I would, I would just stick with it. I'd stick with it. Um, okay. So while we're here, though, we have this. Um, we have cell wise, right? And you've got. We talked about this yesterday. You've got a design that, right now. You know, and I'm going to come up top and kind of draw this out in rectangles. You've got a hero unit. Okay? You've got a hero unit. And then inside of that hero unit, you've got essentially two zones. You've got this left rail of sorts. And I'm just leaving it kind of down so that we can see it. And I'm going to give it some little garish color so that it's easier to pick out. I don't I don't want to make it blue or something where it's hard to see. And then you've got the right zone which is the image. And you know right now the the you know it it's hard to it's hard to say okay we'll put an even margin around this because you don't you don't really have an even margin. You you've got this image over here and it's bigger and that's fine. That's fine. Um, in this particular instance, you're not going to have, a, even, have an even margin. Um, but what you have right now, right now, the way this is constructed, it's not constructed in a two-column design. 
it is constructed with one column that floats on top of a larger image and in I meant to copy that right now the way this is constructed is uh, the second part is really just a background image and the background image you just kind of are placing it and the problem is that when this shrinks you know and, and we'll we'll draw we'll draw this in okay you've got this you got th this one placed as a background image and we'll make that one slightly different color when this whole thing shrinks this just slides into and collides with collides with this left hand side because there's no separation between the two what we need is something that's a bit more responsive okay um, this design works well for your other hero units where um, you don't really have a set shape over here it's just something it's just gen generally speaking you've got other hero units where it just starts at the edge which was convenient when you when you started this whole process and all your all your hero units were like back legitimate background elements not something that looked like a desktop with a phone all right so some of your some of your later case studies that you've been doing for clients it's like okay i'm going to show you the website and a phone and, and that's fine that's fine but i think this requires a different construction the way that i would do this and I'm just gonna I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna go over to CodePen and we're gonna create um, because I want to give you some base code that's away from everything else. Um, I don't want you necessarily, you know, I would literally just pick up all the code that is in this area and like put it in, put it into a div. All right, the what and I and I think you've got it that way. It's what you do with this image over here that matters. All right, so let's go ahead and hop over to CodePen. Um, go to pin, and we are just going to create a new one from scratch. We'll do the one, this one from template. Um, presets template. That should give us some background. Yeah, it gives us the reset and all that stuff. So we're gonna we're gonna say. Um, well, we'll say section close the section, and this is your hero. So, and that allows us to come down and say, okay, well. JavaScript for this little example. The dot hero um, width is 100% because that's what you that's what you've got. Height. We're gonna give this a height so we can actually see it move. So we'll just say 80 vh, so 80 vertical height, and let's go ahead and give it a background color. And we'll, we'll just say this one is um, red. Okay. So that created the shape. Um, let's switch this down. Um, and now we want two columns inside of this. All right. So we basically want a div um, and another div. So we'll call, we're just going to call this one class left. And um, we'll put some content in here, H1. This is cell-wise. Content, content, cell-wise content. And then we'll say this one over here is going to be um, class right. And this will be um, cell wise photo and actually if I want it to you know pull in one of my handy dandy 
images. Could do that. I'm gonna come down here to my assets and grab. Uh, we'll grab the gold experience today, and we'll copy the URL, and off we go. Save it. It should pop up. All right. So there's the gold experience. Thanks, Prince. It's always nice when Prince can come along. Um, no, I don't want to answer that phone call. Leave me alone. People calling me on the phone. What are they thinking? Um, so we have uh, content to the left. We have content to the right. Um, what we need to do now is basically say, okay, um, the display on Hero is going to be grid. So display uh, grid. And that should allow us to see these as two separate elements. Um, and we'll say grid. Okay. So now, now this is, you know, and um, for, for this, I'm going to put a class of full on the image. Um, that way it just, it just kind of fills out the space. Um, I have to create that class, of course. Dot full um, with 100%. You've seen me do this before, although normally I actually use a percent sign, not a dollar sign. Um, so there's 100%. It goes deep, but um, what we what we really need on this um, hero unit here is we need. Um, the left and right have a little, um, well, we need it to have margin, which is part of the problem. Um, that should take care of, didn't take care of it. Um, let's go ahead and Set, actually, let's shift grid off of this, and we'll we'll just put this in a div. We'll call the div grid um, div class equals grid. That this allows us to basically have the background um, exist without. Um, so now we'll move that over. This div of grid will copy these elements over off of hero. Ooh, now we're getting really, really weird. Uh, we'll say dot grid. All right, here's where we are. We, we need this to have a, a width that allows for some sort of margin, and you're gonna need this in your design anyway. So width, um, you know, There's a couple of different ways you could do this. You could say, okay, my width is 70%. And um, and then you could do margin zero auto if you want it to. Um, so that moves this to the inside. And if you wanted to put a background color on this, you could say, okay, background color is yellow. And that should show you like how this is setting up on the, on the screen. So this is very much, I have content to the left. I have content to the right. Um, you probably want a grid gap on yours. So grid gap and that type it, that, that uh, keystroke is just getting in the way. It's a grid gap of 10 picks. Um, What you can't see with the background yellow is where that gap is existing. So I'm gonna get rid of that grid gap there. Um, I also frankly just want this away from the top. So I'm gonna say margin top. Um, one rim. Actually, let's say padding top. All right, 
there. So that gets it away from the top and make it like five. Okay, this is very much beginning to set up, set itself up a lot like your um, your actual project. You'd have a lot of content over here. You'd have content over here as this grew and shrank. This image should move in such a way that it doesn't get in the way of the content that, that is over here. Um, I'm going to go ahead and create a left and right. So left and then we'll say um, background color uh, yellow. And now, now you can kind of see where that grid gap is. If you want that grid gap to be larger, instead of 10, 10 pixels, you, I have rims set up here, so I could just say two rim. Um, so essentially, you're getting that left-right dynamic. But this is where we come in and we begin talking about um, grid area. So this is grid area left. And this is grid area, or sorry. And you can guess that this is gonna be grid area, right? Stop me if you, if this is seeming familiar to you because you've done this before, okay? We're just using grid areas to define where things are laid, laid out on the page. So this right now is a situation where I could come through and say, oh, well, instead of grid template columns, let's do a grid area. Um, and the syntax here is always troubling for me. So I'm gonna go to grid area, grid template areas. So that reminds me right away what I'm looking for. I'm looking for grid template areas. And with grid template areas, I tell it basically what I want it, what type of structure I want it to have. So grid template areas, um, we are going to come through and if I can find my way back to this, I always get lost because I'm like, what am I drawing, what am I making this in? Oh yeah, I'm making it in, in CodePen. Grid template areas, and this is gonna be uh, left and right and that makes it side by side if I said that I wanted it to be left and then right and make it top and bottom and what this really requires is 1FR so What's my structure? It's, oh, it's one FR. Um, if I just made it left and right, there's no structure. It's just gonna be left and right. Um, if I said left and right this way, you know, there's no grid structure here. I've, I've just determined, I've just determined what it's going to be right there. Um, and it's it's determining by the size of the shapes that are here. Now, if I if I came back and I said, okay, grid template columns one fr one f one fr four fr, it's going to give a lot more to the, to the album. If I flipped it around, four fr one fr, it puts it a lot more on the other side. Okay, so you can come through here and really and really define what you want it to be. Um, right now, when I just said one fr, it's just saying, oh, well, the album because of the depth of this, the album needs to be a certain size. Um, so let's come through and actually say one fr, two fr, because you have you have an image that's wider to the right. Um, this re design here, though, is really something that I would use more in the media query. So I do at media um, query. And let's go get the syntax for media queries. 
Um, so media queries, your syntax, m media, max width, min width. Um, I always go with minimum width. Ah, again, I'm over here. Ah, nope, that's not it. That's it. Um, media, uh, media, min width. Um, 500 pixels. I want this to really be top and bottom. Left, right. Unless, and I'm going to get rid of the, the one, I'm going to get rid of that design. So when this is, when this is in a mobile design, I want this to be top and bottom. And really, for you, I don't want left to be on top. I want right to be on top because I want the image to shift to the top. So there's right. something come over a size it's gonna go left to right. And there's something busted here. Class left, class right. And this should be flipped. So there's left to right. So grid, template, column, 1FR, and it's interesting that, that grid area is not aligning the way that I would want it to align. feeling this is not saving properly so let's save it um, grid structure example save let's come back to this let's close it and reopen it code pen gets this way sometimes it goes so long without saving it and then it just so we got this that's what we want Sorry, I've got some background noise here. Um, left, right, full, grid, left, right, right, left. Um, let's take take a look look at our syntax again. Grid template areas. That would appear to be it. Um, and it's set up here. You can see here how, how exactly how it's setting up. 
Head, head, main, main. Oh, I see it now. I see it. Um, oh no. No, I, th I thought for sure I, I'd put a extra, extra um, column in there, but I haven't. Men with, and. Let's see what's going on. Um, grid template areas, display grid, grid template rows, grid template column. Um, that should work, kids. But something is not quite right in the kingdom. So. Our, our media syntax, media query syntax is correct as well. As well. Media all and. Um, uh, that's right, left. So left, right be like that. Why is right not I'm not certain why that image is not moving over. Um, yeah, so if I physically move it, it, it moves, but Something's happening this morning. This will drive you nuts, friends. It's a grid, display grid, right, left. And that's, of course, you know, we get rid of all this stuff. So that's right, left. Um, want to oh, well no that's not right left that is left right um, grid template areas not making a ton of sense to me. It's as if I'm missing something here. That looks like somebody's chimed in. Oh, hey. Yes. Hi, Lisa. Hello, Luigi. Oh, goodness. Uh, <laughs> Lisa dropped the book into, into, uh, into the Discord. <laughs> Sorry, that was disconcerting. Um, yeah, what's going on here? I've got some busted code, and I, I don't see where the issue is. Um, so grid, got that. Left, got that. Got the yellow in the background, got the grid area left. Um, let's make sure we got grid areas defined properly. Um, oh, 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 yeah, okay, so that, that, that's probably where I broke it. So, here, this gets me every time, here, you need, you need quotes around it to organize the template area, but you don't need quotes around the grid area itself. And once we fix that, right now it's left, right. I bet it'll flip around right away when I do right, left. And there it goes. Now when I ungroup, or when I un, 
no doubt this media query and then I go to this I'm going to put this back in mobile mode uh, so this is going to be right left new line organize it down now when we push this over the image is on top when we bring it over if I want the image I w what we want is we want the image to the right so image is right left and then image goes up top see that see the, the image is moved and um, you know I'm just gonna put uh, cell wise paragraph here for display purpose to get a little better idea that there's some more content in there uh, let's go ahead and put a little heft on that h1 so we'll, we'll, we'll just say h1 font size to uh, to rim so you get the idea it's a little bigger then it moves over moves down so it's a little easier to see what's actually occurring but the whole point is that with your design over here we'll come back to Figma uh, with your design you have the cell wise and actually we'll, we can just drop this text in here um, interesting that it's forcing that over uh, did I not define the width oh I'm sorry it's defined reversed there we go um, come on one FR two FR something there's something off now about grid template column is it grid template columns um, no grid template yep, I'm missing an S and there it is all sorts of little syntax errors with me this morning what is going on um, if you can count on anything it, from me, it's a syntax error. But now, now it is operating as we would desire. We want your cell-wise content to the left. We want your image to the right. And then when we get into mobile, we want that image to the top, and we want that content to the bottom. That's how this is going to. That's how this is going to work out for you. We put a little, um, a little padding in here on that left rail. A little easier to read but you get the idea the whole point is allowing this content to travel letting this image breathe while growing responsively without ever running into this content over here on the right so mobile desktop and gets larger as you go. Um, that's the way that I would do this. I'm gonna drop this link in here for you, Rebecca, so you've got this structure. So it's Hero. Hero gives you the background color. Grid. Grid defines this interior space. Left gives you space for the left column. Right gives you, this, gives you the space for the image. And then you know, I would leave the image. I would just put. It, I wouldn't put, use it as background image. I'd just put it in there, um, and then 
really watch out for your syntax errors. I had two. One was putting quotes around this. It's not a string, it's an area. Um, but because you have to put quotes around it here, that's what always trips me up. And then I, I just inadvertently left an S off grid template columns, which I, that's, that's one that I typically don't mess up, but I did this morning. Um, but this, this right here with the grid template areas and then putting the, I always, I always put quotes around the areas because I, I always put quotes around grid area because I look at grid template areas and it requires the quotes. That's the syntax little slip up. And I, I gotta tell you, I've made that a million times. You'd, you'd think that I'd pick, I'd pick up on it at some point. Um, but that's, that, again, that's why I Google and look at the syntax. I don't really need like their idea on how to lay this out. I need, I need a reminder of how do we write that syntax, okay? So, um, yeah, that's going to do it for this morning. Um, if you folks have questions, feel free to reach out. Uh, I'm just going to check feedback loop one more time. Looks like Chelsea and Rebecca were uh, two in the clubhouse this morning. So without further ado, I'm Chris Courtney. I hope you've had a great, I uh, hope this has been a helpful feedback loop session for you. And it certainly has for me because now I remember, uh, I remember my syntax errors a little bit better. But that's going to be it for this morning's edition of the feedback loop. I will see all of you again tomorrow. Take care.